What's up guys, Derek, morepolice.com. Today we're gonna to be talking about Henry Cavill and his purported stack. It was actually leaked by, by uh, his sponsor of all people, go figure. So I actually did a video a while back, this was like a couple of years ago, uh, what I think he did for Superman and the Witcher. And you know, and here I kind of go through his physique development and longitudinal data of his you know physique, body composition changes and whatnot. And what I concluded, in terms of if this guy was indeed natural or enhanced. And he comes out today with this video talking about this like special new supplement he's using too, which I thought I would dissect because a lot of people sent it to me and it's kind of interesting seeing companies sponsoring like mainstream A-list celebrity, you know, Hollywood guys at this point and their kind of attempts at like integrating, I think it's just very interesting to see what an A-list celebrity deems to be like an appropriate organically filmed ad um, for a supplement, like just to see the disparity between the fitness industry influencers and like actual celebrities and whatnot. So we're going to dissect the actual supplement too, and kind of react to his claims and then get into his purported stack. So here we go. Hey everyone. I've been thinking about, uh, those who are starting to work out and those who are trying something new and how confusing a lot of the science can be. Even for those who've been working out for a long time, um, we'll recognize familiar words, but we won't actually know what they mean or, or why we're putting it into our diets. And so I wanted to talk about um, a new product from MuscleTech. The okay, so we have Whey Plus Muscle Builder by MuscleTech. This is the, uh, the uh, I get into some of their classic ads after, but anyways. The Whey Plus Muscle Builder. Um, in this product, there is 30 grams of whey protein, as it says on the tin, and also 6.6 .6 grams of BCAAs, which are branch chain amino acids. Uh, those are good for muscle repair and recovery. I will explain more about those another time. What I want to talk about was the muscle builder component, which is three grams of creatine monohydrate. Creatine is produced naturally by our bodies. When we eat meat and fish, it is produced by our bodies and it is stored, 95% of creatine is stored within our muscles. Uh, and it is a, it's, it plays a vital role in energy production. And so here's a sciencey bit. Creatine is stored in our body as creatine phosphate and creatine phosphate is involved in the production of something called adenosine triphosphate or ATP for short. And ATP is a major source of cellular energy. So, and this is the really- Like the epic music in the background. <laughs> like you can't, you can't just talk without having some like dramatic cinematic sequence going. Important bit about the muscle builder and the product and what it does for us. Every time we work out at a high intensity, we burn ATP faster than our bodies can reproduce it. So if we supplement creatine into our diet, then we increase our body's ability to produce and re-synthesize a- By the end of this video, he's gonna be fucking screaming over the orchestra behind him. ATP. That means we can work out harder for longer and more often, which for me is really useful because I have long stunt days. Dude, I swear to fuck if this gets copyrighted because of this stupid orchestra he randomly has for no reason in the background. Days of stunt weeks where I need to perform at an extremely high level and a high intensity to keep you guys entertained. And so creatine works really well for me. And also creatine, if we're taking it and we're working out for harder, longer, and more often, that's going to lead to increases in muscle size and muscle strength. Yeah, so like ultimately, are you going to replenish your creatine stores on a daily basis? You know, it's very diet dependent, but it's also genetically dependent and activity and size of the human dependent too. Like there are genetic polymorphisms that predispose you to impaired methylation, which, you know, can over deplete uh, methyl donors and result in, you know, a significant amount of your body's uh, resources allocated to, allocated to synthesizing like one gram of endogenously produced creatine which ultimately can lead to, you know, the degradation of, you know, the production of things like acetylcholine downstream and other kind of um, processes that are otherwise going to be uh, potentially inhibited when you have uh, not enough kind of substrate and you are otherwise either, you know, genetically impaired or you're a massive human, you're otherwise, you know, depriving yourself diet related 
um, like you're, I don't know, vegan potentially. Like there's a lot of different ways that otherwise creatine can be useful. It's useful from a supplementation aspect and in general, there seems to be no downside to supplementing with it other than, you know, potential, uh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> Like, I guess if you had impaired organ function in some aspects, it might be kind of, you know, an iffy thing. If you are prone to hair loss and you otherwise, you know, are one of the unfortunate individuals who notice like brutal shedding when you use it, you know, that might be something too, because there is very minor amounts of literature, but there is some to kind of support that there may be a partitioning or an upregulation of 5AR expression in the presence of supplemental creatine. However, in practical applications, does that always play out? Not really, um, but you know, it's worth noting nonetheless. Ultimately, at the end of the day, this is one of the most tried and true ergogenic aids you can possibly use. And he mentions three grams. Is that going to be adequate for all individuals? Well, it's commonly asserted that the three gram dose is going to be adequate post-saturation and everyone's gonna be fine with that. However, that is human size dependent, just like protein intake, just like other nutrients. At the end of the day, just because one guy can get away with three grams, it doesn't mean you will be able to. Like there is some literature to support that it may be upwards of 10 grams for max efficacious, you know, dose for some individuals. Um, so, you know, for just uh, like, personally, I would use five grams minimum if you're like an average size man, to be honest. But anyways, let him finish it off here. And so that is a little bit of science on creatine and I hope you understand, I hope you liked it. More on BCAAs at a later date. Interesting, so BCAAs and not EAAs, which it's kind of interesting to throw in like additional BCAAs on top of what is a complete protein because at the end of the day, as far as I know, this is like, it's whey protein, you know? Like, <laughs> Do I need additional aminos on top of my complete protein? I don't know. Like, pro I would <laughs> I would say probably no, bro. Like, what kind of context would really warrant this to begin with? And then creatine. Like, ultimately, I guess they're trying to make like a more broad spectrum product to kind of make certain marketing claims, which, to be honest, is kind of like classic muscle tech. Like, this was. Uh, Let's go through some of the classic muscle tech stuff. So this was uh, their Nitro Tech Hardcore back in the day with Jay Cutler fucking grimacing in the background. World's number one selling muscle building protein formula. So this is their old protein pre A-list celebrity era during the used top Olympians era and pretend they got their gains from Celtech and shit. Science proves gain 8.4 pounds in 14 days. Sounds pretty fucking good. Eight point now, is it, what type of weight is that? Is it just that weight in general? Like what is it? 8.4 pounds of lean muscle. Yeah, literally saying lean muscle, but they regret this one in just 14 days, 24 mo times more powerful than whey protein. <coughs> Pardon? Immediately triggers an anabolic environment by optimizing nitrogen retention, nutrient absorption, protein synthesis, and cellular regeneration. Proven to accelerate muscle metabolism to build muscle fast. Jay Cutler, Mr. Olympia 2006 and team muscle tech superstar. This is back in the day when muscle tech just had a fucking roster of top Olympians as their ambassadors and they otherwise would do the, the most ridiculous ads ever. Like I remember, uh, what was that one video? It was like, uh, wow, I actually fucking found it. This was, uh, I believe it was called Secret of the Pros. Statements in this DVD have not been evaluated by the FDA. It's a bodybuilding trilogy, Jay Cutler, Dexter Jackson, Johnny Jackson, Branch Warren, and much more. No sound? Come on, bro. I remember Team Muscle Tech presents. This is where they go into the middle of the desert and find like hidden hidden dumbbells and shit, and they like <laughs> they just start cranking <laughs> cranking out a workout. Just like the top IFBB pros would just like go find this fucking random gym in the middle of literally a desert and then just start like lifting with each other. I wish they had the intro to this dude because this was this was hilarious. Bodybuilding trilogy. Let's see if I can find it. Bodybuilding Trilogy Part 1. Oh, here we go. Volume 1. What is this, bro? Mission of Massive Proportions. Oh, is this the... Uh... Oh, here we go, dude. We can all relate to that time you were driving through the desert trying to find a hidden gym in the middle of nowhere. Look at this. Just a 300-pound behemoth trying to find the hidden steroids of Machu Picchu. Holy fuck. Like two and a half minutes in and they're still driving. Let's see. Wow, Branch looks young as fuck, bro. Um, where is the fucking meeting in the desert, bro? That's what I want to see. There was one epic part where they met like in the middle of the desert to train insane or remain the same because those were the only two options, bro. Volume two, please. 
Volume, volume three is here. Oh, here we go, let's see. Come on. I guess this is already when they made it to the fucking desert. I'm not gonna try and, should I find volume two? This is getting so off track, dude. Volume two, let's go. All right, I'm not gonna be able to find it, so whatever. Anyways, the fact is, is they, Branch Warren, fucking Johnny Jackson, Jay Cutler find each other in the middle of the desert after driving like off road. And then they crank, they just like crank a fucking full body workout, bro. And that's it. Uh, it's funny too, because I remember, uh, like, I guess the marketing is getting more like, I don't know, it's always attempted to be science based, but the claims were like far more exaggerated, but they are still kind of known for being like the exaggerating company, like for me. But everyone falls for it at some point, dude. Like even like before I knew shit, I bought so m I bought Celtech. I also bought this shit called Gakic, Creekic, and Lukic. So if you've ever see seen this, the hardcore muscle building stack, rapid 15 day transformation cycle, produces permanent gains in high quality rock hard muscle. It's clinical test subjects immediately increase strength by 10.13 or 10.5%. That's a fuck ton, bro. 100% pure anabolic effects, key components, scientifically proven in over a hundred clinical studies. So yeah, when you actually look at the components of the stack, like, yeah, you could actually find a hundred clinical studies to support it. That's not inaccurate, but it's because this shit is ultimately like glycine, leucine, and fucking creatine in like hard horse pills. So this shit was, uh, let's see, three products in one box and it came with the hardcore muscle building manual. Maybe this had the fucking DVD in it that I just tried to watch. Immediately increase strength by 10.5%. You will become denser in 15 days. Let's see, clinical study at University of Florida found elements of get the elements of the GACIC exam could immediately increase your strength by 10.5%, increase fatigue endurance by 28%. It's funny because it says capsules, but I remember this shit being literally chokeable fucking horse pills where I couldn't swallow pills back in the day when I was a... Uh, Teenagers starting this shit, so I used to literally like grind it into dust and then swallow it. Yeah, it's fucking wild, dude. Like, think of the worst multivitamin you've ever popped and then times it by like two. That was Gakic, Lu Kick, and Cree Kick. Um, Lu Kick, immediately stimulate muscle growth. Uh, this was just like leucine. Cree Kick, this was just fucking creatine. But back then, you know, we thought, uh, we thought this shit was magical. This was, uh, it's funny too, because I actually thought Gakic was the most important of all of them. And I was like, I started to buy it separately because I didn't think Cree Kick and Lu Kick were important. And little did I fucking understand at the time, this was the creatine and this was the leucine. <laughs> and this was like the random fucking glycine in a giant horse pill. So it was like, what was actually helping the most? Like probably the creatine and then, I don't know, maybe leucine, I guess a little bit, but it's like ultimately I was having fucking protein anyways. So, um, yeah, it's just funny. There's the hardcore muscle building manual. This shit looks good, dude. Though. Like if you're a kid and you're just like shopping around and you see this, it's easy to get influenced when there wasn't really knowledge on the internet available to dissuade you from doing this back in the day, unfortunately. So anyway, circling back to Henry Cavill, he is sponsored by Muscle Tech now, and he has this whey plus muscle builder, which is essentially just whey protein, BCAs, and creatine and the dosages is 30 grams whey protein per scoop, which is not bad. Three grams creatine monohydrate and 6.6 .6 grams of BCAAs. Obviously the criticism immediately is gonna come into why not EAAs and why do you even have this as a combination to begin with? Way at the bottom, we have the supplement facts panel. We have 160 calories per scoop, which is kind of calorie dense, but it is a 30 gram protein density per scoop. And ultimately it kind of just, you know, looks like a normal, protein powder, except it has these additional, you know, the amino matrix and the fucking scientifically studied muscle filter as a subsection, like as if we're so stupid, we don't know what creatine monohydrate is, but I guess maybe that's their car target customers, people who've literally never even heard of creatine. So I can't really, maybe I shouldn't be talking shit, but I mean like, it's just funny how they have this in a separate subsection to like, like headline it as if it's like a totally fucking obscure, like brand new thing. Um, but yeah, on the front of the thing, it says build 70% more muscle than regular whey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So of course, if you actually like extrapolate out what three grams creatine is going to do for you on top of whey through osmosis, you're going to be drawing in some intramuscular water and you're going to be getting a, you know, upregulation, ATP production and whatnot. But like here in a six week study, subjects with at least three years of weight training experience who combine these core ingredients in whey plus muscle builder with a weight training program gained 70% more lean muscle in subjects using regular whey protein. 8.8 .8 versus 5.1 pounds. Like 
Kind of misleading, bro. Kind of reminds me of the old fucking Celtech shit. Not to the same degree, but it's like maybe transparency. It would be quite obvious for somebody to extrapolate and be like, huh, like lean body mass. Do you mean like a decent amount of water as a result of the creatine? And in reality, this is no different than just using whey plus fucking creatine anyways. Like trying to make it sound like it's some fucking innovative thing, you know, it's a bit misleading. But anyways, getting into his stack. Yeah, they actually called it Henry Cavill's stack. Not supplement stack, but just fucking stack. So it's not inaccurate. These products are the best of the best and for a good reason. So we just went through this one. The ultimate weight protein plus muscle building formula. Single scoop of this. <laughs> Dude, groundbreaking formula. Delivers 30 grams of premium protein. All right. Okay, the pre-workout, I'm sure you guys will be interested in. Celtech Elite. What have you guys done to change that? And amino build, presumably this is going to be a BCA. Is it going to have EAAs or is it going to be just BCAAs? Seven grams of BCAs plus electrolytes. All right, so I don't know. Like, do you guys want me to break down why the fuck you should have EAs instead of BCAs? Like, I don't know. Like, I feel like it's kind of a waste of time, but kind of interesting that they have not kind of like gone past that. I don't know. It's kind of like a bit of a prehistoric fucking thing at this point. Celtec Elite, a total of five grams of HPLC certified creatine and creatine HCL. So presumably this is going to be like, why, why is Henry Cavill having creatine on top of his fucking whey muscle building creatine like is three grams not sufficient like you just said in the fucking video it sounded like it was pretty sufficient so like in what circumstance would i want to get this product on top of that i'm kind of interested to know and we will get into it soon because he actually has his supplement stack explained bro and we will get i think the main one most people are gonna be interested in is the pre-workout so cell tech elite where's your fucking supplement facts panel uh let's see we have bca oh here we go an eaa amino complex muscle and strength growth matrix with you know a rounded out five grams of creatine I like how they split it up to make it seem a bit more science-y when in reality it's fine with just five grams of mono. Research back cortisol control, a probably, I don't know, I would say a sub-efficacious dose of ashwagandha and then electrolytes, which is obviously a fucking negligible to be honest. 55 milligrams and 55 milligrams of dipotassium. Like, so pretty much an EAA product with creatine in it, you know, at the end of the day. So I don't know. Do I really want to break that down? Not really. It's kind of boring, but um, it is, you know, just a regular run of the mill EAA, BCAA blend. And it has the additional stuff that has, you know, creatine. So therefore we can say we built 90% more muscle than the competitor's product. Okay. I got it. I get the fucking strategy, bro. This is Shatter Elite. Pretty cool name. And we will get into that after I hear Henry Cavill tell me about the efficacy of his stack. Okay, one thing I just noticed is like and dislikes is disabled. So presumably this is before this dislikes were removed. So the fact that this came out earlier this year and this was disabled, like presumably it didn't go over too well, I guess. Um, so I don't know, like did they think it was too salesy to what? I don't know. Hello everybody. Today I thought I might tell you about the supplement program that I've had myself on uh, to make sure that I'm alive and well and that everything is running smoothly and I'm taking full advantage of my workouts. So in the morning I shall wake up between 4 and 5 a.m. typically and then I shall have a protein shake with oatmeal. The protein I use is MuscleTex 100% grass-fed whey protein. I use deluxe vanilla because there's blueberries in my shake and those two things go very well together. Then my physiotherapist, Freddie, will uh, give me a flush session of the muscles, make sure the muscles are all working properly. After that, I shall have some pre-workout and I will use MuscleTech Shatter Pre-Workout Elite. This stuff is fantastic. It is absolutely what I need to get through my workout in the morning, especially considering it is so early. I will then make myself an amino build elite from muscle tech also just to make sure that i am maximizing the potential of my workout so he says maximizing the potential of my workout like you know presumably he's kind of talking like mountain dog john meadow style trying to not dig yourself out of too deep of a hole you just don't allow as much muscle protein breakdown to begin with and then hypothetically you can prevent as much doms prevent as much you know degradation of your actual fucking muscle and like actually get in the gym and train again sooner. This seemed like a reasonable video, dude. I don't know why I got hate or if they just did that proactively. Here we go. Let's do this. Like no absurd marketing claims, nothing like over the top, no absurd like promotion of supplements that are just like totally fucking useless. 
Um, and let's see, the most recent video he did was September 22nd, Strength Redefined. Should it matter which came first? Does resilience lead to strength? Am I watching the Witcher trailer or fucking Muscle Tech ad? Or is it strength that breeds resilience? Have you discovered these two pillars yet? Or perhaps you are still looking for both. So you could face your challenges head on. We all know that life is full of unexpected and unimaginable hurdles. They come at you from all corners and no one is exempt. But resilience lives in all of us, just waiting to be harnessed. When you discover what you're made of, potential, persistence, dedication, and determination, then you will already know you were born resilient and already have the mental strength to handle whatever challenge life throws at you. There may be days when you feel the heaviest thing you lift is your head, but will you? Will you find your character to pursue your dreams? To learn, to give, to be better? Not only for yourself, but for everyone. Because life takes more than just muscle. Life takes strength. Damn, bro. This fucking inspirational muscle tech ad right there. No more training with the pros with Johnny Jackson. I got super deep voice, heavy hitting, fucking motivational Henry Cavill telling me what's good. Um, I don't know. Do people just find that shit cheesy or what? Because, like, I don't know if it necessarily convinces me, like, oh, I must buy the product now. So, anyways, um, we have Henry... Oh shit, he's chief creative director now of Muscle Tech. That's fucking wild. So I guess he has like a stake in the company. Damn. So I guess he has some uh, vested interest above and beyond just being like an ambassador slash like athlete. I just assumed he was like some super highly paid ambassador. Um, fuck. I guess to get him on board though, you got to give him like a cut of your company or some shit. Shatter Elite. All right, let's get into it. So we have red spinach. All right, L citrulline, beta alanine, zynamite which produces carnosine, also known as the thing that beta alanine is useful for. It's a pretty cool fucking bottle and like graphic thing behind it. Uh, $40, why take it? It is one scoop, scientifically engineered, single scoop. Your training experience will be redefined. Boost plasma markers of nitric oxide for up to eight hours. First to market to feature six grams of pure L-citrulline plus the red spinach extract, a highly concentrated and scientifically backed NO booster. Experience a long-lasting pump that you can feel. Unparalleled energy focus and neurosensory. Unrivaled energy, focus, and intensity with a precise dose of caffeine plus the botanically derived ingredient Zynamite along a dual-sourced dose of choline and the cutting-edge Dynamine. Just one scoop packs a never-before-seen combination of full clinical doses of betaine, caffeine, um, red spinach, L-citrulline, beta-alamine. All right, let's go down. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I don't like how they have their sup facts like way the fuck down here, but it is what it is. All right, 25 servings per container, choline as bitartrate and alpha GPC. So presumably this is split between the two or the choline bitartrate might be outweighing it because ultimately this is like a prop blend in a single ingredient dose list. It's kind of weird. Like I, how am I supposed to define how much it is bitartrate versus alpha GPC? So not a huge fan of bitartrate, frankly. Um, and the alpha GPC, um, like these doses are not really that useful, but anyways, eight, let's, the citrulline dose is good. Six grams. We have the uh, red spinach extract. How much actual nitrates does this yield? Standardized for 50. Okay. Standardized for 15%. So we're looking at what? Like, so we have 1200 milligrams of the full compound here. So we times by 0 0.15, we got 180. So... You know, just because you're the first to market with this combination doesn't mean it's the maximal way to achieve NO precursors because that 180 milligram nitrate yield is not that significant at the end of the day. But still, six grams of L-citrulline is good. That's uh, much better than what most like mainstream companies are doing, to be honest. Um, and then this is going to be somewhat additive on top and actually probably have like some like level of noticeable difference through a different mechanism of action. 
Um, Hawthorne extract, um, as Cratagus pinatifida, 200 milligrams. Um, to be honest, I do not have much experience with this ingredient, but you know, point like 200 milligrams, is that going to make a move the needle difference? Um, I don't know, I would, I would be skeptical, but might be worth looking into. Um, powerful performance and strength amplifier, uh, 3.2 grams of beta alanine. So this is the primary carnosine um, precursor that we'd be looking for and 3.2 grams is not, you know, that's like the minimal we'd wanna see for asserting that this would be a daily driver. You could otherwise achieve a saturation amount of the performance enhancing amount of beta alanine that actually warrants the face and butthole itches, bro. So like I would rather see at least 6.4 if you want it to be like, like ultimately to get to 179 gram saturation point for your two to 3% boost in endurance that you're gonna have to take it every single fucking day. You'd be like 6.4 grams is that threshold level of daily dosing administration that gets you to that point within a month. So it's not like you're getting nothing out of this. It's just going to be, you know, like sub maximal. And if you're using this intermittently due to the fact that you don't wanna take stimulants or NO precursors on a daily basis, you know, it's gonna be a while, if ever, if you achieve some sort of benefit from this ingredient other than transient face crackhead itch, like <laughs> crack, I can't even talk, crackhead itchy face status. Betaine anhydrous, a osmolate at a good dose. I like this, it is a methyl donor and otherwise has different applications in the body and has actually new literature emerging regarding its potential effects on lean body mass. That's actually really interesting. And I find this to be a good ergogenic aid, to be honest. I think this is a heavily overlooked ingredient and 2.5 grams is a good dose. Taurine at one gram, a um, good antioxidant, good uh, for avoiding cramping as well. Um, this is good, dude. This is not a bad, this is not that bad, to be honest. Uh, like this is pretty fucking well-rounded. Intense focus, energy and neurosensory, choline bitartrate, oh, here, Oh, okay, this was my bad. This was the daily value um, percent based on your dietary intake. So this is the actual full spectrum dose here. Choline bitartrate, 472 milligrams. Caffeine, 350. Bro, they're going hard. L like I'm, this is big for a fucking mainstream company. That's big, dude. L-theanine, 125 milligrams. Not too much because they don't want to be too calming, presumably, because you know, oftentimes you'll see in the literature higher doses of L-theanine to complement caffeine, but that's usually in a nootropic context in an acute performance metric context in the gym. Um, L-theanine, you gotta be a little bit cautious of to not get like too smoothing of an effect. Dynamine, um, 100 milligrams, this is a really fucking expensive ingredient that to be honest, like I just, I just don't feel it above and beyond caffeine. Like I don't see, like the, the on paper attribute is that it does not build any tolerance like caffeine. However, if you just like don't really feel it, you know, like what is there really a point of including it to begin with other to be like, look, we have like a uniquely like trademarked ingredient uh, or patented actually. So for this one, you know, I had actually looked into if we could use a mega dose of dynamine in our products, but it was so cost prohibitive and it just like, you just don't really feel it that significantly to make it useful when there are other stimulants that ultimately, if you wanna move the needle with something that is adrenergic, stimulating, gets you kind of like up and fucking ready and firing, you know, the caffeine is the main vector for that. But then above and beyond that, you could use like PEA analogs, um, synephrine analogs potentially, anything else that is currently, like there are a lot of ways to move the needle in a lower milligram burden that are otherwise like far cheaper and far more effective. So, you know, even just like a couple milligrams of alpha yohimbine, not my favorite thing pre-workout, but some people really like it. I feel like it can be so hit and miss that it could potentially ruin a pre-workout for like a third or to half of individuals that use it. Um, Cause it can make you feel a little bit, you know, like uh, jittery and a little bit like over the top, like racy. Um, but yeah, like it's certainly a better option in my opinion and certainly more cost effective than a um, 100 milligram dose of like T-Crean or Dynamine. Um, Zynamite at 50 milligrams, standardized to 60%. Mangiferin. Um, have not tried this ingredient myself, personally. But again, when I see these kind of dosage burdens with these kind of ingredients that are trying to be like alternative, when I see like patented stimulants or trademark stimulants, I get a bit like weary because they're oftentimes like very, very straight edge to the point that they're almost essentially non 
recognizably working for the majority of individuals because you would not be like there's no one really trademarking like aggressive stimulants that could otherwise disappear overnight you know what i mean like you're otherwise getting these straight edge companies that are like making little tweaks and modifications to like the fucking caffeine molecule or things of this nature and otherwise are ending up with like not that caffeine's bad it's a fucking great um stimulant of course but i mean coming out with things that are so straight edge and smooth that they're never going to get like targeted i guess through FDA oversight. Cause you know, if you're putting a shit ton of research into an ingredient, you're going to play it very safe. If you're investing potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars of university studies into an ingredient, like you don't want it to get targeted. So you're going to use something that's so straight edge and benign that it doesn't get targeted. So the majority of people who want like a heavy hitting stem, you know, is it going to be these kind of ingredients in general? Like for me, like, I just don't feel them to be honest. And that's me too. Like with Gorilla Mode, it's a pretty like, sm it's not on the spectrum of like hyper aggressive pre and like, like very, very neutral pre. It's more like, you know, somewhere in the middle. It's like a smoother, um, high dose of caffeine and area versus some of these other things are like, like this is, I don't know. I would, I would, you know, put this sort of in the ballpark of, um, Gorilla Mode for potency in the stimulation context now that I'm looking at the uh, Yohimbine extract down at the bottom. Like we have 6% Yohimbine supplying Raul sign from the bark too. So you will get a bit of adrenergic signaling through alpha 2 adrenergic receptor antagonism. So this is not going to be as smooth as I implied just looking at this because this is actually a bit of a risky ingredient to put in a pre in my opinion, but you know, people will like it who want to like feel a bit more kick. That's why I sell Raul sign separately, by the way. Like if you want to add Raul sign onto Gorilla Mode or Gorilla Mode Energy or any kind of those products to make it more um, aggressive, or if you even want to use Alpha 2 AM as like a makeshift stim fiend pre and then put that on top of nitric or something, could definitely do that. You could have a smash your head through the wall, like racy aggressive stim fiend junkie pre through us too. But you know, a lot of people think that's over the top, to be honest, but individuals who like to feel something, even when their tolerance is like so high that 350 caffeine is like not satisfactory and they want a bit more oomph, that's where something like a raw sign might come into play. So yeah, that is, uh, this is a pretty like impressive formula for muscle tech in my opinion. So I'm not, uh, not too uh, upset, you know? Not that I would be fucking upset, but <laughs> you know what I mean? Not too uh, overly critical, I guess. So I think there are a lot of expensive trademark things in here that aren't necessarily like at dosages that really make a difference. So for example, alpha size, alpha GPC at 50 milligrams, like I would like at fucking minimum, I'd want to see like 300 personally, but presumably the formula, it's getting so expensive at this point. Once you have fucking dynamine in there, dynamite, like all of these different things, um, you can only do so much with it and still make margins. Like you have to pay fucking Henry Cavill too, you know? So, but overall looking at this like broad spectrum, it hits a lot of different vectors. It has the, um, L citrulline at a good efficacious dose it has nitrates in there, at, you know, a dose that is, um, well tolerated and like could be potentially useful. It has beta alanine at what many would consider in this industry to be like a good dose. Betaine anhydrous. I'm not saying that's by the way, like again, we get into like the margins and cost metrics and whatnot of everything, like 3.2 grams is like a good dose on paper. It's just the, f the fact remains is to get the maximal effect from it, you need to be taking like 6.4 grams on a daily basis for a fucking month. So you're gonna have to supplement with it separately on top, but you're getting some of it in there. Um, betaine anhydrous, I like that. The taurine, you know, not something I put in pre's, but it could, you know, there's definitely an argument for it. Um, and you have some of the, you know, cholinergics in here. You have the um, alpha-2 adrenergic receptor antagonism for a bit more aggression in the stimulant vector. You have the caffeine at a good fucking dose. You have the L-theanine to smooth out the kind of like over stimulation slash like neurotransmitter, like over excitement sort of thing. Yeah, like this is good, dude. This is a pretty solid, uh, solid product in my opinion. You know, it's not like the end all be all, but for a $40 pre um, with the way the, you know, supply chain is going lately. Um, not bad, dude. You know, I was expecting worse from this company, but they have uh, um, surprised me a bit. So not bad, dude. Shatter Elite has, uh, is decent. So anyways, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below about Henry Cavill's stack. And uh, any, you know, any comments help the algorithm. They're much appreciated. Like, subscribe, check out my blog. MorePlaceMoreDates.com, follow me on Instagram, MorePlaceMoreDates. Actually, by the way, I think we actually might still be having the buy two, get one free sale on our fat burner. So Raul sign separately. If you haven't tried it, definitely worth trying. Um, it's kind of undisclosed what the dosages in there 
formula here. It just says standardized for 6% Yoen Bind supplying our old sign with a 20 milligram bark. So like, I don't know what that equates to. Like personally, I think, I think one milligram of Raul sign in a pre is like safe. Three milligrams is kind of where you start to get like efficacy out of it and get like a heavy hit. So yeah, we have three milligram capsules and they're buy to get one free right now. It's a really cheap way to make any pre-workout you have like a bit more aggressive in the stimulant vector or get, you know, make more of your fasted cardio because it is ultimately a good overlooked fat burning agent in my opinion. And we have buy to get one free still and a few other things on the site if you want to check this out. But anyways, that is it. Um, thank you guys for watching. Uh, like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplacemortates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplacemortates. Um, Facebook, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Apple Podcasts. If you want to support the channel, you can check out anything I'm associated with in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.